everyone. Today I'm doing a tutorial that's a little more industry specific, so it's going to be really helpful for you if you're trying to sell your calligraphy services, specifically if you're trying to sell envelope addressing and if you have multiple envelope addressing styles. Um, so one of the important things to be doing when you're a calligrapher is creating envelopes and pictures of envelopes that will allow you to show your work um, and show people what you can do. So I took the time today to create some photos for my website online, but I did things a little differently because instead of addressing all of my styles onto envelopes like this and taking pictures of them individually, I decided to go about it a little bit of a roundabout way, um, but that way it would just keep my work looking super consistent. So I actually ended up styling an image first. So I created a flat lay um, with these envelopes and then I digitized my calligraphy onto the photo in white. It still looks super realistic, but that way the images on my website are just really, really consistent. So I wanted to take you through that process today. Um, I've put up the photo of the final result real quick so that you guys can kind of see what that looks like. But I wanted to take you through that process. So if that was something you wanted to do on your own, um, you would understand how to go about it. And I will also add real quick the main reason that I'm going about it, this process and digitizing or photoshopping my calligraphy onto the envelope is because that way I don't waste a bunch of envelopes with the mess ups that I create. Doing different styles of calligraphy back to back can be super challenging and that's why I decided to um, do this process the way that I did. And one other thing really quick, I want you to see this is what the calligraphy looks like when it's written directly onto the envelope in white. So what I'm trying to do is replicate this as closely as possible digitally so that it looks really natural on the online photos and it doesn't look, um, doesn't look funky. The very first thing you're going to want to do is what I mentioned before about creating that flat lay styled photo. So I decided to adhere these stamps to this envelope. This is going to be the envelope that I'm digitizing the calligraphy onto. And then I'm going to pull in a couple other props that I like. So I have this piece of eucalyptus that I really like to use in my images. Um, it's dried so that way I can just kind of use it whenever I have this fun little tube of clothespins that I like using, some ribbon, and then I also have um, a calligraphy pen holder as well. Let me grab that. All right, so if I was gonna create a styled flat lay photo, I could do something along the lines of this, which is pretty much what I did the other day when creating the styled flat lay images. Anyhow, it's really easy to kind of like move the props around, decide where you want them, take a couple different images. I, I took probably five different variations and then I ended up having two that I really liked and stuck with. All right, so now I've gone ahead and pulled up what I do in Lightroom on the computer so that you guys can see this part of the process as well. So here's the props that I was kind of showing you on the video before. And here's how I've edited the photos. I took them with my Nikon D3200, but I know people's iPhone cameras are awesome now as well. And I probably could have gotten similar results with the iPhone or with a really nice smartphone camera. I just might not have been able to brighten them as much um, as I could if I took them raw on my digital camera. So that's why I use the DSLR instead. Um, and so you can tell that I took time to style a bunch of different varieties. This is an example of the photo before it's unedited, so it's just a lot darker. Um, but the rest of these are nice and bright and have great variety. And I settled on using the last two, I think. I really liked this one and I liked this one as well because they're similar in composition, but they have variety between them. So it'll still kind of spice things up when I use the images online as opposed to using the same image over and over for every calligraphy style, which can get a little monotonous. 
All right, so once you develop them within Lightroom or whatever editing program you're using, this is not a Lightroom tutorial today, so I'm not really showing you how to do all of that. You would save them as a JPEG, which I did in this folder right here. So you can see all my images are in this folder, the envelope samples image, images, excuse me. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take time to write out all of your different addressing styles. So here's the five um, most common addressing styles that I use on my envelopes. And I don't know if you can see in this video or not, but you can see pencil marks. I did them all in pencil first. And then I went over them with one of my very favorite pens to use. It's the Pentel Touch brush pen. This is linked below, so if you want the opportunity to buy the same one, it's amazing. It has a nice point to it, and when you give it pressure, you can thicken the line, so it creates a really nice fog calligraphy in a sense. And then I took these five styles, once I had them written out and I had made up my fake addresses, these are all fake people with completely fake addresses, then I was able to bring in my light pad and create these in actual calligraphy. So I'll show you that real quick. This is the light pad that I like to use. It's a Huion light pad. That's spelled H-U-I-O-N. I also have that linked below. I think it's a super affordable and a wonderful option and definitely a really nice size for what I'm doing here. So for this next step, I would go ahead and put down the addresses that I wrote in the pencil and pen first and then I would put a blank piece of paper over them which would look probably something like this and turn my light pad on to illum illuminate the bottom layer. I'm not going to show you that part. It's not really necessary. I will try to do another tutorial on using a light pad for calligraphy at some point but this is what the final result ended up looking like. So obviously the way the calligraphy looks is slightly different than what the pen looks below it, which is why it was really important for me to do the addressing in actual calligraphy as opposed to just digitizing my handwriting looking like this. So these are the final ones. These were kind of a couple of practices up here at the top. And then we have the bottom as well. All of these were then written in my calligraphy and I have my second sheet of calligraphy. So there's the handwriting and calligraphy as well. Now you're probably wondering how I'm gonna be turning black calligraphy into white calligraphy for these envelopes when I Photoshop them after I edit the pictures. And that is a little bit of clever finagling within Photoshop, so I'll make sure that I show you how to do that. But basically what I've done by writing them like this and digitizing them onto the image that has these envelopes is just save myself the time of handwriting a bunch, messing them up, and then I just get a really consistent and nice look for my website. All right, so then the next step is that we're gonna be heading into Photoshop. I'm gonna to try to slow down a little more in here just so you guys can understand kind of what I'm doing because Photoshop can get really, really tricky, especially as a new beginner. I totally understand um, that it can be pretty confusing. So I actually did all of the work in here when I did this the other day. So I have all of my layers. They're just hidden now so you can't see them. But if you were to be starting this process, you would drag in a JPEG image, and I'll just go ahead and show you. Here's one of the ones that I chose. And you would fit it onto this artboard, essentially, and um, that would just be basically the best place to start. And then what you're gonna wanna do is start digitizing the calligraphy files. And this is where it's gonna get a little interesting because if I click on this layer, Kevin's song right here, it shows you that I've already done the work, but obviously you haven't seen the process for how I've done it. So I'm going to show you a quick example of that really quick. All right, so I sent these to my computer the other day. These are all of the 
addresses that I used and I'll go ahead and just pull this JPEG here into Photoshop and that's what it looks like when it first is put onto the artboard and just hit enter to lock the photo into place and I'm gonna go ahead and use this lasso tool right here on the left gives you a nice little example <laughs> and I'm gonna surround the lettering whoops surround this address that I want to keep so this is the one I'm gonna use for the example. Just go all the way around it, and then hit Control and click, and do Layer via Copy. Also, just so you know, I do use a Mac for this when I'm editing, um, so if things look a little different because you're using a PC, that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, all right, so, You'll now see on the right over here that I've created a new layer one when I did that copy layer. And here's the original image. Um, the original image is still this whole thing right here. So let me hide the envelope layer. I'll hide the original image and that's what we are left with, right? Well, what I wanna do is delete this original layer first, the image 7180, and I'll just pull that into the trash can. All right, perfect. So now we're left with this. I'm gonna go ahead and click the envelope one to make it visible, that layer, um, make it visible again, so that we're kind of seeing what, we were, what we're working with here in terms of size. Okay, so this is definitely going to need to be smaller than Mr. and Mrs. Lance Marsh for the addressing. So I'm gonna click on layer one because that's the layer we're working with. Always, always click on the layer that you're trying to change or work with, otherwise nothing's gonna happen. I remember that was really frustrating for me when I was first learning Photoshop because I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. Also, if you are scaling your image, making it bigger or making it smaller, make sure that you're hitting the shift key to keep it to scale and so it's not going wonky like so. All right, undo. Now I'll hit enter. I like the size of that right now. And I'll turn it to the side a little bit. All right, so this is getting a little closer to the size that we're going to need it to be in the long run. Um, and one other thing, when I did change the size of that layer, I was using this up here, the move tool. So that's what you'll have to be cl clicking to be able to like move this around um, to a different place on the image. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is that we obviously need to get rid of this background that was the paper before. So we're gonna make sure we're clicked on layer one. That's what we're working with. I'm gonna hide the envelope layer again because this is this will get a little distracting if we keep it visible. I'm just gonna leave it on its own like this. I'm gonna hit the tool down here at the bottom for create a new fill or adjustment layer. And I'm gonna click on levels, which is the fourth option, or the fifth, excuse me. And then I'm gonna take this little icon on the right side, this little like triangle, I'm gonna drag it up to here. And you can already kind of see how that background is disappearing when I do that. So that's like brightening the contrast a ton, basically. Um, and then I'm gonna bring this arrow on the left closer in. And we have just the black calligraphy left like that. But we need to take in mind that the levels is actually acting as its own layer right now. So you need to use the command button to select a layer one. That's the layer we're trying to change. Then right click and choose merge layers. So we're gonna ch we're gonna create that into one layer that we're working with now. Um, I know the layers can get really confusing, so just try to kind of follow along the best you can. I also linked another digitizing video below that if you want a tutorial of me doing this really, really slow, then you can get that version. All right, so now I'll go ahead and I'll show the envelope picture again. It doesn't matter which one I show. They're just the different, very varied photos. But you're gonna notice that we still have this white background appearing with the black lettering. We need to go over to the left side then 
and hold down on the eraser tool to choose the magic eraser tool option. And you're gonna see here at the top that there's a couple different things, tolerance, anti-alias, contiguous, sample all layers, etc. I'm gonna leave it exactly how it is right now. Um, the tolerance, I'm just gonna leave it 30. That's something you can experience with at a later time. 30 is honestly perfect when you have such high level of contrast right here. And I'm gonna click that white background and it's all going to disappear, which is awesome. So we basically cleared that background now. So if I hid that envelope layer, you would be seeing the lettering. And if I show the envelope layer, you'll know that there's no background anymore. But the problem is that this, not only is it a little too big, so I'm sizing it down a little bit with the move tool, but it is also black and it needs to be white. So I'm gonna teach you a quick way very quick and very easy way to do that. And that is through using the rectangle tool over here on the left. So make sure once again, we're on levels, um, the layer that we're trying to edit right here, which I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rename that editing layer so you guys can tell that's what I'm working on. So make sure you're selected on that. We're gonna choose the rectangle tool and you want to make sure that your palette down here, the little foreground color is set to white. So like if I had it set to pink like this, I'm going to be drawing a pink rectangle and that's not what I want to do. I want to be drawing it to white. So I drag it all the way to the upper left, click on that rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that's going to be big enough to cover the lettering. Hit enter and then move it so it covers the lettering completely just in case it didn't before. And this is the coolest and my most favorite part of the process because the editing layer is now hidden by the rectangle. So if you right click on the rectangle, you're going to hit create clipping mask and that will clip to the lettering to turn that layer white, which is seriously so cool. So now we can tell over here on the right that this has been clipped, the rectangle has been clipped to the editing layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight both of them, either do control click or right click and merge the layers. Boom. So now I renamed it to rectangle one again, um, which it changes the names of the layers when you merge things, so it gets kind of confusing. Um, but I'll rename it the editing layer but now you can see that I've created this digital version of an envelope sample that looks super natural. I mean, it looks pretty much like I addressed it and took a photo of it, but I can switch out the picture background if I want to. For example, like envelope one and envelope two are a little different. So if I hid this one and showed envelope one, then I would be getting I would be getting this as the result instead. And I'm not sure exactly what is happening right here. I think I might have accidentally erased part of the envelope. But if you do have any blemishes, I'll show you a really cool trick real quick since we're here. You can use the clone stamp tool. Hit option to take a picture of the area you want to clone and then cover the area you're trying to edit which it does not look like it's working. So I'm not entirely sure <laughs> where this dot is coming from. Huh, that's super interesting. Nope, it's definitely, oh, do you know what I was doing? I had my tool on the editing layer selected instead of the envelope layer, the correct envelope layer, which would explain why it wasn't doing anything. And that's what I was kind of trying to tell you before that you have to make sure the right layer is selected. So let's try this again now that I have the right like layer clicked on. So option, click, boom. All right, now I fixed the white spot with the clone tool. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so then I'll click the editing layer again and recenter it. And now it's super easy 
for me to go back and forth between the two different envelope layouts that I have. And then once I decide which one I like and everything's perfect, I just do file, save as envelope sample, and I'll change it to JPEG. So you can kind of already see right here, the styles that I was working on the other day were saved, but this is how you would do it. And you can see it appeared in my folder. And if I open that up, I have a beautiful JPEG that I can now either put on Instagram or put onto my website. So there you have it. That's pretty much exactly what I did for my process for creating the sample envelopes for my different calligraphy styles. I'll go ahead and show you real quick what that looks like. It's underneath my services and envelope addressing. And I was finally able to add all my different styles of addressing while keeping them looking super, super natural. And the fun thing about Photoshop as well is that if you're photoshopping the envelope and you've made some sort of mistake, that gives you the ability to kind of clean it up before creating the final version. Um, but basically this tutorial will be super helpful if you're a fellow calligrapher like me, kind of trying to get started and trying to get your work online. Um, just to put things in perspective, I started calligraphy in the fall of 2014 and I did not add anything like this website, uh, like this to my website until the past week and it's now 2018. So seriously, don't be hard on yourself if you've just started calligraphy and you don't have something like this yet. This is just kind of a tutorial to give you an idea of something you can do. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give it a like if you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe as well. I'm trying to post two new YouTube videos a month this year. Have a great day.